I'm going to tell you a story, my story, and it's all about dreams, love, and one heck of a roller coaster ride with my mother in law. My name's Emma, and I'm a hairstylist. Been one for about six years now. I love what I do shaping, cutting, and coloring. It's like every head is a canvas, and I'm the artist. But my dream? That's to own a beauty salon. Not just any salon, though. I want a place where people come not just to look good, but to feel good too. I met Tom at a friend's party. He was different, kind, funny, and had this calm about him that just drew me in. He's 10 years older, works at a bank, and, honestly, he's been my rock since day one. We hit it off, but took our sweet time getting serious. Marriage wasn't a race for us, it was more about enjoying the journey together. Before we tied the knot, I got to meet his parents. His dad was a gem, easy to talk to, and always had interesting stories. But his mom, Linda? That's a whole different story. From the get-go, I could tell she wasn't keen on me. I tried, though, really tried to get on her good side. One day, after a particularly long day at the salon, I came home to Tom. I needed to vent, and he was always my sounding board. Tom, your mom's driving me nuts. Every visit turns into a lecture on how I'm supposedly neglecting you for my career. Tom, bless him, took my hand and said, Emma, love, I've told her to cut it out. You and your dreams are just as important as anything else. If she can't see that, it's her problem, not ours. His words were a bomb, but it didn't change the fact that Linda was relentless. It was like she had a playbook on how to be the mother-in-law from hell. But here's the thing, I wasn't about to let her dictate how I live my life or how Tom and I run our future marriage. This was our journey, and I was determined to make my dream a reality, Linda's approval or not. The salon was busy one afternoon, the buzz of dryers and chatter filling the air, when my phone buzzed. It was Tom. Hey, babe, how's the day going? Swamped. You know how it is before the weekend. What's up? Just checking in. Mom called again. Wants us over for dinner this Sunday. I sighed, already dreading it. Can't wait, I replied, the sarcasm heavy in my voice. Tom chuckled. Hang in there. It's just a dinner. And who knows? Maybe this time will be different. Yeah, and maybe I'll become a blonde overnight. I quipped. We both laughed, but deep down, I knew what I was up against. Linda had made it clear she wasn't my biggest fan. But this was my life, and I was not about to let anyone, not even my future mother-in-law, stand in the way of my dreams. Our wedding day was something out of a fairy tale, minus the magic and with a touch of real-life drama, courtesy of Linda, my mother-in-law. Tom and I decided on a simple ceremony. Nothing too fancy, just close friends and family, good food, and great music. We wanted it to be a celebration of us, our love, and the life we were about to start together. In the weeks leading up to the wedding, the stress was real. Between dress fittings, menu tastings, and making sure everything was just perfect, I barely had time to breathe. Tom was a rock, dealing with most of the logistics and doing his best to keep me sane. One evening, we were finalizing the guest list when Linda called. Tom answered, and I could tell by the way his face dropped that the conversation was going south fast. Yeah, Mom, Emma's here. We're just going over the guest list. What's up? Tom's tone was patient, but I saw his jaw clench. Linda's voice was a tinny squawk from the phone. I couldn't make out the words, but the tone was unmistakable. Tom sighed, rubbing his forehead. Mom, we've talked about this. Emma's friends are her choice. Yes, even Jesse. No, I don't think it's inappropriate. Look, we want everyone we love there, okay? I bit my lip, knowing Jesse's inclusion was a sticking point. Jesse had been my best friend since high school, known for her, let's say, colorful personality and even more colorful language. Linda had met her once and declared her unfit for polite company. Tom hung up, pinching the bridge of his nose. She's on about Jesse again. 
thinks it'll be a disaster to have her at the wedding. I rolled my eyes. Because Jessie's going to start a mosh pit during the vows, right? Tom cracked a smile. You know, that might liven things up a bit. The wedding day arrived, and it was beautiful. The ceremony went off without a hitch, Jessie behaved herself, mostly, and everyone had a blast. But at the reception, Linda couldn't resist stirring the pot. She cornered me while Tom was off greeting relatives. Emma, dear, I must say, everything is quite, nice. Though I'm surprised you went with such an, eclectic mix of guests. I forced a smile, trying to keep the peace. We wanted everyone important to us here, Linda. It means a lot that they could all come. Linda hummed, eyeing Jesse, who was tearing up the dance floor. Yes, well, I suppose it's too late to change anything now. Just remember, dear, you're a part of our family now. It's important to maintain a certain standard. The warning was clear, and I nodded, excusing myself as politely as I could. Tom found me a few moments later, his brow furrowed. Everything okay? You look like you just went ten rounds with a blender. I sighed, leaning into his side. Your mom. She's just, a lot. Tom kissed the top of my head, wrapping an arm around my waist. I know. But hey, we're married now. It's you and me against the world, remember? I smiled, the tension easing a bit. Yeah. You and me. The rest of the night went smoothly, and despite Linda's best efforts, nothing could dampen our spirits. We danced, laughed, and celebrated our love surrounded by those who mattered most. A couple of months into our marriage, I figured it was time to extend an olive branch to Linda. Despite the wedding drama, I wanted to make peace, or at least try. I decided to bake a pie, apple, Linda's favorite, or so Tom claimed. I'm no chef, but I can follow a recipe like a champ when I put my mind to it. The kitchen was a disaster by the time I finished, flour everywhere, apple peels on the floor, but the pie? It looked pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Tom wandered in, eyebrows raised at the mess. Babe, did a flower bomb go off in here? I laughed, wiping my hands on a dish towel. Very funny. I made a pie for your mom. Thought it might be nice to, you know, try to get on her good side. Tom looked surprised, then touched. Emma, that's really nice of you. But are you sure? She can be, well, you know. I shrugged, a bit nervous, but determined. Yeah, I know. But I gotta try, right? So, we set off, to Linda's, with the pie in tow. I was anxious, rehearsing what to say in my head. We rang the doorbell, and Linda answered, her expression neutral until she saw the pie. Her eyes narrowed slightly. Emma, Tom, what a surprise. And what's this? I held out the pie, trying to sound confident. I made you a pie, Linda. Apple, your favorite. We sat in the living room, the pie on the coffee table between us, an unspoken battleground. Linda finally spoke, her voice cool. It was very, thoughtful of you, Emma. I must say, I'm surprised. You finding the time to bake, what with all your work. Her tone had that familiar sting, but I was determined to keep things light. Yeah, well, I wanted to do something nice. Thought it might be a good way to, you know, spend some time together. Linda nodded, but there was a skepticism in her eyes that made my stomach twist. She excused herself to get plates and came back with a knife. She cut into the pie and paused. Then, without a word, she scooped up the pie and dumped it in the trash. My mouth fell open, shock and anger battling for dominance. Tom stood up, his voice tight. Mom, what the hell? Linda faced us, her expression cold. That pie was spoiled. I could smell it. We don't eat spoiled food in this house. I was speechless, the effort and hope I'd put into that pie trashed in seconds. Tom was furious, his usual calm demeanor, gone. Emma made that for you. At least you could have pretended to appreciate it. Linda's eyes flashed. 
I will not pretend for the sake of politeness. It's better to be honest. Emma, I appreciate the gesture, but let's not pretend this changes anything. I stood, my hands shaking. You know what, Linda? I tried. God knows why, but I tried. Come on, Tom. Let's go. Tom didn't hesitate, following me out the door, leaving Linda standing in her pristine, cold living room. The car ride home was silent at first, both of us simmering with anger and hurt. Finally, Tom broke the silence. Emma, I'm so sorry. I had no idea she'd. I cut him off, my voice weary. It's not your fault. I just, I thought maybe we could start over. Guess I was wrong. Tom reached over, taking my hand. She's the one who's wrong, not you. We won't let her ruin what we have, okay? After the pie fiasco, life went back to its usual rhythm. Work was busy, which was good for my dream of opening my own salon, but it also meant long hours away from Tom. We made it work, though, grabbing those moments together whenever we could. Then, something weird started happening. One morning, I found a bouquet of flowers on our doorstep. No card, no nothing. Just a bunch of roses, their petals bright against the morning dew. I thought Tom was trying to be romantic, so I brought them inside, smiling, like an idiot. Tom, you sneaky thing, trying to surprise me with flowers? I called out, finding him in the kitchen. He looked up, confusion written all over his face. What flowers? The ones at the front door. Don't play dumb with me, I said, putting the vase on the table. Tom came over, examining the bouquet. Emma, I didn't buy these. I thought maybe they were from one of your clients or something. I frowned, the mystery of the flowers suddenly not so romantic. But there's no card. Who would send me flowers anonymously? We shrugged it off, figuring it was a one-time thing. But then it happened again. And again. Every few days, a new bouquet appeared. Always beautiful, always anonymous. It was flattering, but also kind of creepy. One evening, we were lounging on the couch when there was a knock at the door. Another delivery, another bouquet. This time, I felt a chill run down my spine. Tom saw my discomfort and wrapped an arm around me. This is getting weird, right? It's not just me? No, it's definitely weird. I'll ask around at work, see if anyone's pulling a prank or something, Tom said, but we both knew it didn't feel like a prank. The turning point came when Linda visited one Sunday afternoon. She walked in, her eyes immediately landing on the latest bouquet adorning the living room. And who are these from? Another secret admirer? She asked, her voice dripping with disapproval. The way Linda looked at me then, with a mix of suspicion and something else, set off alarm bells in my head. Why? You know something about this, Linda? Linda scoffed, turning away. Why would I know anything about your flowers? I just find it curious, that's all. Flowers from a secret admirer, and Tom knows nothing about it. Makes you wonder. The implication was clear, and I felt my temper flare. What's that supposed to mean? You think I'm, what? Cheating on Tom? With who, the florist? Tom stood up, placing himself between me and his mother. Okay, that's enough. Emma's not cheating, and these flowers are just some weird thing we're trying to figure out. Let's not turn this into something it's not. Linda huffed, clearly not convinced. Well, I just think it's very odd. In my day, if a woman received flowers from another man, it meant something. But what do I know? The conversation ended there, but the seed of doubt Linda planted lingered like a bad smell. We decided to install a security camera, hoping to catch the mysterious flower deliverer in the act. Days passed, and just when we thought it might have stopped, another bouquet arrived. We rushed to check the footage, hearts pounding. The screen flickered to life, showing the early morning hours. A figure approached, hooded and unrecognizable, leaving the flowers on our doorstep, before quickly walking away. 
The quality was too grainy to make out a face, but the build, it looked familiar. Tom and I watched in silence, the same thought crossing our minds. Could it really be Linda? Was she going to such lengths, just to stir trouble between us? After catching the hooded figure on our new security camera, Tom and I were on edge. The flowers were one thing, but the thought of Linda, or anyone, really, sneaking around our house was downright creepy. We needed more evidence before confronting anyone, especially since accusing your mother of such bizarre behavior wasn't exactly an everyday conversation. Let's keep an eye on the footage for a few more days, Tom suggested, his brows furrowed in concern. If it's really mom, we need to be sure. Plus, we need to figure out what to say. This, this is just nuts. I nodded, feeling a mix of anxiety and anger. Yeah, but what's the end game here? If it is Linda, what's she trying to do? Scare me? Break us up? Tom sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know, M. But we'll handle it, together. Okay? Okay. I agreed, though the pit in my stomach grew heavier with each passing day. The flowers kept coming, and each bouquet felt more like a taunt than the last. We reviewed the camera footage daily, but the hooded figure was careful, never revealing their face. It was maddening. Then, one afternoon, I was at work when I got a call from Tom. He sounded more excited than I'd heard him in days. Emma, you're not going to believe this. I was reviewing the footage from this morning, and guess who showed up? Who? I asked, my heart racing. Mom. Clear as day. She took off her hood this time. Looked right at the camera, can you believe it? I took a deep breath, trying to process the information. What do we do now? Confront her? Yeah. It's time. I'll call her, ask her to come over. We need answers, Emma. The conversation with Linda was going to be difficult, to say the least. I dreaded it, but the mystery of the flowers had to be resolved. When Linda arrived that evening, the air was thick with tension. Tom and I sat her down, the latest bouquet sitting between us like evidence in a trial. Mom, we need to talk about these, Tom started, gesturing to the flowers. Linda looked from the bouquet to us, her expression unreadable. What about them? We know you've been sending them, Linda. We saw you on the camera, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. For a moment, Linda was silent, then she let out a sigh. All right, I sent them. But you have to understand, I was just trying to protect my son. Tom and I exchanged bewildered glances. Protect me? From what? Tom asked, confusion lacing his words. Linda's gaze shifted, avoiding eye contact. From making a mistake. I thought if Emma received flowers from another man, it would. I don't know, open your eyes. My jaw dropped. You thought I'd cheat on Tom? And that sending flowers would prove it? It was foolish, I see that now, Linda admitted, though her tone lacked genuine remorse. I just don't want you to end up like me, trapped in a loveless marriage. Tom's voice rose, a rare edge of anger, cutting through. So you sabotage our relationship? How does that make any sense? The silence that followed was heavy. Tom and I were speechless, trying to digest the twisted logic that had driven Linda to such extremes. Finally, Tom spoke, his voice calm but firm. Mom, what you did was wrong. You don't get to decide who's right for me. Emma and I are happy and nothing you do will change that. The conversation escalated quickly from there. In the end, the air between us and Linda, colder than ever. Linda's actions had crossed a line, one that couldn't easily be erased. So, Tom and I made a tough decision. We stopped communicating with her, cutting off ties to protect our peace. It was a hard choice, especially for Tom, but necessary. So there we were, me and Tom, with a little one on the way. I was over the moon, floating on cloud nine, and thought, hey, why not share the joy with Linda? Maybe, just maybe, this news would be the bridge to mend things, right? I called her, heart thumping like it's trying to break free. 
Linda, you're gonna be a grandma. I spilled it, all giddy-like. There's a pause, and then, really? Oh, Emma, that's, that's wonderful. She sounded genuinely chuffed, which had me thinking. All right, maybe things are turning a corner. She's keen on celebrating, so we chose this cozy little spot downtown, nothing too flashy. The nights went smooth, food's great, and Linda's played nice, which is a rare sight. I was sipping on my apple juice, staying on the straight and narrow, for the bub, when out of nowhere, the room started to spin. I thought. What in the heck? Cause all I've had is juice. I said it out loud. I feel dizzy, like I've knocked back a few. Hoping it's just me being paranoid. But Linda, oh, she jumps on it, like a cat on a mouse. Drinking while pregnant? Emma, that's just reckless. Tom's face fell. He grabbed my glass, sniffed it, and his eyes go wide. This ain't just juice. We called the waiter over, asked him to check the cameras, cause something's fishy. The footage? Clear as day. Linda spiked something into my drink while we were out. The row that followed was epic. Tom was fuming, I turned rather red, and Linda? She tried to spin some yarn about teaching me a lesson. That's it. I told Tom. I can't do this no more. She's out. Tom nodded, all serious. Yeah, no more. This is the last straw. We cut ties, for real this time. No more chances, no more, let's fix things. It was tough on Tom, but we had our little one to think about. We were done playing Linda's twisted games. Life's been a roller coaster, you know? Right when my little boy Jamie came into this world, we had to say goodbye to my father-in-law. It was a mess of happy tears for Jamie, and sad ones for George. Then, out of nowhere, Linda, who's always been like a thorn in my side, calls up. She's all soft and sniffly, wanting to see Jamie. Guess losing George hit her hard. I thought, why not? Maybe it's time to smooth things over, for Jamie's sake. All right, Linda. Let's try and make things right. I told her, figuring maybe we could finally get past our rough history. First time Linda met Jamie, it was like watching ice melt. She was all over him with toys and cuddles. Made me think, maybe, just maybe, we could be something like a normal family. She even asked to see Jamie more often, and I said yes, hoping for the best. But man, was I wrong. A few weeks down the line, I'm out with Jamie, and we bump into Linda. Figured I'd dash into a store real quick and asked her to watch Jamie. Came back, and my heart just dropped. No Linda, no Jamie, no nothing. Panic hit me like a truck. I tried calling her, no answer. I called Tom, nearly choking on my words. Tom, she's gone. Took Jamie. I can't, I just can't find them. Tom was all calm in business. Hang tight, Emma. I'm coming. Get the cops over, now. Before I could even think straight, Linda's back, minus Jamie. She hits me with, you ain't fit to be a mom. I gave him to someone better. My world stopped. But then the cops showed, thanks to someone who saw the whole mess. They got Linda spewing nonsense and blaming me for everything under the sun. Turns out, Jamie was just a couple yards over, safe and sound. Relief washed over me, but so did anger. The cops took Linda away, and when Tom showed up, we just held on to Jamie like he was our lifeline. After all that, it was clear as day, we had to cut Linda out for good. No more chances. It hurt, sure, especially for Tom, but we had Jamie to think about. After all the chaos, it was clear Linda needed help, more than we could give. Her actions, especially with Jamie, were way off, scaring the life out of us. So, me and Tom pushed hard for her to get checked out by professionals. It wasn't easy, convincing her or ourselves, but we knew it was the only way forward. The doctors did their thing, and the verdict came back, Linda was struggling with some serious mental health issues. Hearing it was a mixed bag of relief and sadness. Relief because, finally, there was an explanation for all the madness, 
and sadness, because, well, it was Linda at the end of the day. They recommended a place where she could get the right treatment, a spot where she'd be looked after properly. It was tough, seeing her go there, but it gave us a bit of peace, knowing she was in good hands. With Linda getting help, things took another, unexpected turn. Turns out, she received an inheritance from her late husband, and with her not being able to handle her affairs, it all went to Tom. Emma, we can use this to do something good, something right. What about your dream, the salon you've always wanted? He said, his eyes all lit up with the idea. We found a spot, not too big, cozy-like, and started the ball rolling on setting up the salon. It was hard work, picking out everything from the chairs to the mirrors, but man, was it exciting. We named it New Beginnings, because that's what it was for us. A fresh start, a chance to build new memories, to leave the past where it belonged. Tom joked that we should have called it From Chaos Comes Beauty, but New Beginnings stuck. Looking back, it's crazy to think how far we've come. From the brink of falling apart to standing strong, together, with a future we're building with our own hands. Linda's situation, as tough as it was, led us here, to this moment of peace and promise.